Hey everyone, so this is Catfish Season 6, Episode 20, the finale. So, it's called Caitlin and Kenton. Caitlin um, has an unusual way of doing things. Um, while they're wrapping up Jose's episode from last week, um, Caitlin comes up while everyone's having lunch. Um, she is like, well, I ha I'm a big fan, and I found that you were... Um, you were in the city through Snapchat, I live about 30 minutes away, so I just came out, I just decided to be like, okay, well, you know what, I'm gonna come out here. So, she asks for, um, excuse me, for the help with a guy named Kenton, who says, uh, Neve knows him by, be by Kenton being, um, his personal trainer. She shows him a picture, uh, or their, his pictures, um, and Neve scrolls to one where he and this Kenton guy were taking a selfie. Um, and it turns out that they, he only met the guy like the one time um, at some sports thing or something um, that we later find out. Um, so they invite her to sit and you know talk about why she's there, and she's like, well, I met this guy, Kenton, a couple months ago on Facebook when he, um, it, when he messaged her, messaged, messaged her on Facebook. Uh, they exchanged numbers pretty quickly, and they started to text. They ask, um, because, uh, she, she reveals it a little bit earlier that, you know, she's thinking about moving to Kentucky to be with him, um, and she, they ask her if he, if she's considering moving there, and she's like, well, only if he truly is if he says he is. Mm. Um, and they point out that at this point, they already know he's lying about him being these personal trainer, um, and apparently he's really dead set on her and her daughter moving to Kentucky, and she doesn't want to do that if he's lying about everything or even a good chunk of what he's told her. Um, her daughter's not in, her daughter's father is not in the picture, and in fact, apparently, according to her, she has a restraining order out on him, against him, to the point where that, uh, and they're pointing out that maybe it's him who's behind all this because uh, that way they could he could be closer to his daughter and stuff like that. Um, so after they finished, you know, doing everything with Jose's episode, uh, later that week they go over to Caitlin's house, um, and once inside she explains everything uh, about getting to this point. She says she grew she lived in uh, Wor Worcester or well, however you pronounce it, until she was eight, um, when her parents had won a bunch of money, um, from a casino, and so they moved down to Florida, and around the age of 14, or when she had, when she turned 14, she was raped, and so her mother, or her parents, moved her back up to Massachusetts, um, and, the person who raped her was a family, a close family friend. Um, Max wonders if there was, um, at first, um, she reveals that her father, her daughter's father did a lot of lying and cheating, and when she moved on from him, she got into another relationship that was basically the same exact thing. So, Max is like wondering if she had any inkling that it was Kenton or this uh a kid this Kenton dude was either of those two guys and she's like, I'm pretty sure neither one of them uh neither one of them are, uh, is doing this. Um and because and she doesn't think so because Kenton has a southern accent. And so I'm just like, girl, if you're such a big fan of the show, you'd know that off based off of previous episodes um, there have been people who, um, who have, um, faked their voice to get, um, who have faked their voice to make sure the other person didn't know what was going on. 
Um, so, I, I mean, obviously, didn't, that didn't turn out to be, uh, it didn't turn out to be the, uh, her ex, either of her exes, but still, like, don't discount it just because he ha- has a different sounding voice, because he, there have been cases where the person faked their voice, um, in order to not be suspected, so, um, Kenton apparently was a victim of rape as well, which we find out is actually true. Um, Max asks, uh, if, um, Kenton was just, just saying that in order to bond with her, because, as he points out, he seems to be mirroring, mirroring her life, because we find out that he also has a, a, a child as well, he has a daughter, and... That's the second thing um, that they had supposedly have in common was the fact that they have a, a child and that they were raped when they were younger. So, um, and um, she doesn't necessarily um, believe that um, is going on. So, um, and the reason he has been telling her that he can't video chat is that he's always working which i'm gonna i'm gonna bring that up back up i'm gonna bring that back up back around because based off of what he he has what has been uh, what he was saying and doing at the end of the episode i'm gonna bring that shit back up because so he was he was he was oof, I, he want like he was really trying my nerves at the end of the episode like he was really trying them and so I'm just like, okay, so I'm going to get back to that. I'm going to have to make sure I remember that because there, because mm, mm, he, he was trying every last damn nerve in me. No, he really was. Um, so she, she's opening up and saying how saying I love you is hard for her because of the fact that she was raped and that, um, she wants to say to Kenton, but she doesn't. She can't because of the long distance. And adding to the fact is that he keeps pressuring her to just up and move um, cross country uh, to to just uh, be in a relationship with him and, and move in with him and stuff like that. So, and it's like, well, if you if you don't move to Kentucky, this really can't work. Um, this relationship can't work, and he's basically giving her, giving her an ultimatum. So, they're wondering if there was ever mention of, like, just a, just a simple visit on, and Neve was thinking more a simple visit on his part, since, um, she mentions earlier that while he has a daughter, he only pays child support and doesn't get to see her, see, see his daughter. So, um... Uh, she, at first she thinks she's mistaking that his question was directed towards her, and she's like, well, I can't because I'm a single mom, and I don't have the time and all that, but he's like, well, I meant on his part, and he, and she, she says, well, he never offered, so, um, she shows them their texts, and he, and one of them jumps out to, at Neve, where he prompts her, to ask what Kenton meant, and Caitlin explains that she works six days a week, and when she finishes working, she goes to pick up her daughter from daycare right after, and he, it, it was something along the line, of the text that he sent was something along the lines of, why are you not texting me as much as, like, why are you not texting me every single minute of the day, um, or why aren't you texting back right away, and all that stuff, um, And so she, she, and this is basically the, like, this another time of him, like, asking her to text, uh, every, all, like, every second of the day, but obviously she, like, she can't do that while she's working, because she's working, she, she can get fired for that shit, so why is she gonna mess up the money she's fucking making to text you when she could be out of a job and eventually end up losing her house or her apartment, a house or whatever, because 
you're you can't understand about the fact that she's working and trying to provide for two people in the same household not just one so <laughs> and so he further tried to uh, try to guilt trip her by saying um well i've dated single moms before who put in more effort than you and i'm just like what i mean what <laughs> I'll get back to that, because it, it comes back around at the end of the episode. So, um, Max points out that for a guy who's supposed to be a gentleman, he's not acting very gentlemanly, which, yes, please, it's, it's, like, thank you. Um, and she's, like, she's trying to defend him, saying, well, it, the, he's been acting like that for the last few days or weeks, and I'm just like, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> he still shouldn't be saying shit like that. I mean, I mean, he 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 says himself he has a freaking child just because he doesn't just because he doesn't have her for either part of the time or full time or whatever. He knows what it's like to have to provide for a child. So. It, I just, I mean, and Max is like, well, people, people show the true colors after a while, and I agree with that. After like a, a couple, couple weeks or a couple months, people will, people will show you who they really are. It may not be right away, it may not be overt, it may be subtle, but people will show you who the fuck they are, and. In, in due time. They will. They will fucking show you. So, it's just about opening your eyes and seeing it and, and stuff like that. So, then even Max go and to investigate. They, they Google him first and everything they find um, and put, by putting his name into Google um, comes up with uh, profiles of him um, dating rat profiles with his picture um, or pictures then go to his Facebook page and look at where his friends are at. Um, they notice that his relationship status as in a relationship uh, was put as um, excuse me, um, was put as in a relationship on March 6th. And then right under that, in the comments of that, he there's there there's this um status update where or uh right on uh, in the comments of the status update uh, a girl named casey says said or said i love you make it seem like she's the girl that he got in a into relationship with so they reach out to her they see a whole bunch of likes on his last photo upload message a few of those people and then they get a call from rachel they ask her about captain she says she knows him through facebook and he first contacted her about relationship advice on what to do with his girlfriend Paige. He got flirty with her uh, shortly after. Um, and she says this was uh, at the beginning of May. So when this episode was filming, it was recent. Um, the next day, uh, Neve gets one new message from Casey. Um, and she says they can call her, and they do. And she's, she's like, well, I met him in person in Cincinnati and they dated for about a month in Kentucky but then broke up and she says the reason is because he wasn't really a nice guy. His ex messaged him on Facebook sending screenshots of emails he sent her saying he loves and misses her and won't stop trying to be with her and his daughter um, and he told her that he was Nee's personal trainer. Trainer. So again this is something that this is something that this whole Nee's personal trainer bit is uh, get, uh, something that he uses fairly often, it seems. So, um, they are on, uh, after they hang up with, uh, Casey, they, um, then go on over to tell this to Caitlin, and on the way over, they get a call from Kenton, who tells them, um, that he says he heard they were qu asking questions about him, and so he jumped on a plane, uh, to come meet Caitlyn, um, and I'm like, 
why couldn't you do that? Why couldn't you offer to do that, do that, um, before? Like, especially knowing she's a single mother who works six days a fucking week. Like, so I'm just like, boy, bye. Just bye. Please bye. Um, I don't have time for you right now. So, once I had Caitlin to tell her everything they found, it's just that she doesn't talk to them, talk or talk to K- Kenton, uh, when, right away. Um, or right then, because she she's still reeling from everything, and she's pretty angry at the moment. So, even Max is going to meet Kenton at their hotel, um, and he says it's BS, she can't make time for him because she's a single mom. <sighs> Mm. I I really wanted him to catch my hands because I was like, "Ooh, boy, if you don't stop, ugh, he's just." I was thinking he's his ass is full full of shit. He's full of shit. Um, so they call. Um, they don't. I mean, he's all up in his feelings about how like, well, if she really wanted to be with me, she would make time to text me during the day, like at like. And all this stuff. He's like, he's all up in his feelings. It continues the next day. So, it's just like, they call Caitlin after you talk with him. And tell her what happened. And after hanging up, Max is like, well, his ass is in a relationship. And I'm sitting here thinking like, yes, Max. I think so too. Because he wouldn't be, like, because it just, it's further exacerbated by the fact that he, the next day when all of them go talk to him, he keeps harping on the same damn thing. Because if he really wanted, like, if he really wanted to be with her, he would understand. Like, he would fucking understand. Because he has a child himself. Which is why I don't get it. Which is, like, which why I don't, which is why I don't get why he's harping on her for trying to provide for a fucking child. Like, he has a child. He knows what it's like to have to provide for them. Even if he doesn't see her, like, at all. He, he should know. And it just doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't have a kid and I know that. Like, please. <laughs> um... So the next day, they um, go meet him at this coffee coffee shop, and and he's like, "Well, we used to text a lot and all that stuff, and then now all of a sudden it's like one or two a day." And she's like, "Well, look, I have a job. I work six days a week. Uh, I started at, at the, and I'm working six days a week, six days a week at this new job where my phone is in a locker. It's in a locker where I can't have it out, and." on my person so I can text you like and it's in there like my entire shift I mean she doesn't say that but it's basically it's basically what she she's saying and so I can't text right away and then I and then when I'm finished with my shift I have to go and get my daughter right after I can't dilly dally and and let them let these people let these caregivers like you know fucking like I can't let these caretakers take care of my daughter for however long I want them to take care of her because they have out they have hours on which they're open and thankfully they can keep her my entire shift I mean whenever I have a shift they can take her the entire time so like I I I have to go get her I can't just I mean because and plus she's my one number one priority I mean, I, cause I have to provide for her. Like, this is basically what she's saying. Like, she has to provide for her, her daughter. And she can't just, like, stop everything and just talk to a man whenever the fuck she wants. She has to take care of her daughter. And so, and he, he's just like, well, I don't think that's a good excuse. But it's not an excuse. Like, she, like, I, I mean, I have to, I have to work. And if I have my phone out on me, my job, I'm gonna get fired because I'm, talking to you while I'm at work. I'm gonna get fucking fired. And what the fuck am I gonna do it, when I get fired? Because I have to provide for not only me, but my daughter. <laughs> or my or my my son, I think. Yeah, no, it was a daughter. She, she, she said a daughter. Um, um, so, it's just like, I, I mean, what am I gonna do if I get fired? I can't just up and leave and just move in with you just because you want me to. Like, I mean... I mean, that sounds nice, but, I mean, what if this doesn't, and she brought this up earlier, it's like, what if it doesn't work out between us? It's like, or she basically hinted at us, like, what if that doesn't work out between us? Like, what the fuck am I going to do then? Now I'm out of a job, uh, like, I'm out of a job, I'm all the way across country away from my family, and 
basically I'm gonna be homeless because he's not gonna want me around. So what the fuck am I gonna do if I if I move all the way over there and it doesn't work out between us? Which thank you for for bringing that up because it's like I mean there there are plenty of people who who move con- cross country for a, another person and then don't have a backup plan in case things don't work out. Um, so. I'm just like, he, I mean, I'm just, I'm just sitting here thinking like, okay, I don't know why you're so harping on this because weren't you, weren't you the one that said that you work, the reason why you couldn't video chat was because of the fact that you were working all the time. So why, why are you harping on her for not texting you back when Every time she's asked you to video chat, you always tell her, well, I, I, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. <laughs> so, I don't know. He he was just, like, like Max said, he was being a little bitch. I'm sorry, but he's being a little bitch. And he, I, I would not be surprised if he was already in a relationship. Like, he was in a, uh, already in another relationship by the time that he came out there. I would not be surprised at all. Because otherwise, I mean he would let them come to him um he would he would have let them come to him instead of him coming to them so uh i wouldn't be surprised if um he was in a relationship and he was making this big ass deal about it <clears throat> excuse me because of the fact that he uh didn't want them to uh he didn't want his new girlfriend to know about, about all this but uh, why you would go on a national television show that almost everyone knows about, um, or, and everyone, almost everyone has seen, uh, once or twice in their life, um, I don't know why he would do that when, uh, anyway, um, so two months later, um, she hasn't talked to any of the guys since the show ended, and she definitely hasn't spoken to fucking Kenton since, um, the day at the coffee shop either, so, good for you, um, good for you for focusing on your daughter, and all that, and, um, when they go to talk to Kenton, he's still being a little fucking punk, so, uh, I did not, um, have any fucks to give for him, um, and I would not be surprised if he was still doing this shit to the woman, um, so, um, I have no idea if this show is coming back on for a seventh season. Uh, I'm, at the moment, I'm just going to assume that's going to be the case, uh, that they're going to. Um, I will, I'll, uh, I suppose I can give the first few episodes if they come back for season seven um, a try and see if they come up with anything, because um, cause this season, the second half of the season was really just trying my last nerve, um, it really, really was, so, um, yeah, I'm just gonna see what happens, hopefully they, uh, might, I don't know, apparently Neve and his wife Laura are starting a new show, which I think already aired on, I don't know if it's airing on, like, Facebook or something, or, like, on MTV or what or what have because I don't know. Um, but apparently him and his wife are doing this uh, new show about relationships and what to do when dates go wrong or something or so, I don't know something like that. Um, I mean I don't think they're gonna. I mean as far as I know MTV hasn't stopped uh, or canceled a show so. Uh, I'm going to assume that they're coming back for a seventh season, um, or, or they're currently air, uh, filming for this season, or the seventh season, and they're coming back soon, or coming back for, like, 7A or something like that, I don't know, but, um, so basically, um, I will have a list of definitive shows I plan on reviewing, let's say, next time this, uh, next time next, uh, this time next week, sorry, I can't talk right now, this time next week, by this time next week, I'll have a definitive answer of what I want to review for the fall, 
uh, since I really was only reviewing uh, Catfish this summer. So this time next week, I will have a definitive answer about what shows I'm going to review for the fall and when those shows will premiere. So uh, please bear with me, and I'll see you guys later.